everyone, and I do apologize for being late. I didn't realize I was going to open the public meeting, but uh, we do need to fix that 281, don't we? This is terrible, terrible traffic. Anyhow, um, I wanted to welcome all of you to join us tonight as the city staff will present the proposed budget. As you know, last year we changed the process a little bit. In the past, we have every district has the public budget public meeting after the proposed budget. Last year, we changed to have, I believe, four meetings or five meetings, uh, four meetings prior to, um, to the proposed budget to seek input. And then during the July time, the staff members go out and prepare the budget based on the input and then uh, come back and we have the other post-proposed budget meeting. So this is one of those post-proposed budget meeting. We do want to hear from you what you believe, whether we are, what are the priorities. We want to uh, hear from you and we still have uh, this month until next month to tweak all the, the budget and council members and also city staff will get those input and we make minor adjustments. I also wanted to um, ask Councilman Ron Yernberg, who is the new council member from District 8, and maybe he can share some few words because we do share a dislocation for both the north side. And I don't know if Councilman Sows will be here, but I think he was in the pre-proposed budget public hearing. So, uh, congratulations uh, for being elected, uh, but uh, as you know, serving on council certainly um, fun, sacrifice, challenging, you name it. So the floor is yours. That's why you're here to <laughs> Thank you, Councilwoman Chan. Uh, I just want to say hello. Are there any District 8 residents here? Raise your hand if you're District 8. Okay. Uh, this is a citywide budget. We have the city staff here who have done uh, uh, long hours throughout July when council was on recess working on this budget. But we do want to emphasize the fact that this is a working session. So there are a lot of difficult choices to make. Councilwoman Chan said, welcome to council. Here's your $50 million budget shortfall. So uh, it is a working session. There's a lot of difficult choices to make. So we do want to hear some good dialogue here uh, about this proposed budget from you. Um, some highlights that city staff will go over. There is no recommended property tax increase. There are some increases in fees, and there are some difficult choices, again, to make uh, cuts to some city services. So I want to hear about all of those things, and look forward to having a healthy dialogue tonight. Thank you. And I understand that tonight uh, is going to be uh, Gloria Butardo, who is going to be uh, running this uh, public meeting, and I would like to ask Gloria to also introduce and recognize all the city staff members. We have several assistant city managers here tonight, but I wanted to recognize my staff also. I have my chief of uh, uh, constituency, uh, Adam Trevino, who used to work for District 8, and chief of um, communications, Roger LeBrand, and also my special project coordinator, David uh, De La O, and I know that my chief of policy will be here shortly. And, and I forgot to do that as well. In the back, we have TJ Mays, who's our District 8 chief of policy. We also have constituent services, Coda Rio Garza. They, uh, Coda is in the District 8 office, which is in the Colonnade. We haven't changed locations. Uh, TJ bounces back and forth. Also, switching us. Uh, uh, Switching offices, we have uh, Jeff Bazan, who you may remember uh, from Councilwoman Chan's office. He is now Chief of Staff uh, for District uh, 8. So a lot of shared experience, a lot of great uh, knowledge and service from, from our two offices. So we look forward to working with you. Thank you, Thank you Councilman. Um, we do have a number of city staff here to help us through this process tonight, but let me start by introducing uh, my peers. Carlos Contreras is Assistant City Manager. Ed Belmaras is also Assistant City Manager. And we have Maria Via Gomez, the Budget Director, so she's the one who does really all the hard work on this. 
We have a number of um, department heads and assistant department heads who will be facilitating at the tables. So maybe I'll just have them introduce real quick, um, starting with Dale from the library. <laughs> Dale McNeil, Assistant Director for Public Services at the Library. Hi, I'm Noel Horan, Deputy Chief of the San Antonio Fire Department. Jose Banellos, Assistant Chief of San Antonio Police Department. Nikki Ramos, Assistant Director with Parks and Recreation. Renee Frida, Assistant Director of Human Resources. Melody Woosley, Interim Director, Department of Human Services. David Newman, Assistant Director for the Solid Waste Management Department. Jazzy Hossein, Assistant Director for Sims Department. Art Reinhardt, Assistant Director of Public Works. Terry Canowin, Assistant Director of Development Services. Paula Stalkup, Assistant Director of our Communications and Public Affairs, including our 311 call center. And then we also have a um, number of budget staff, so if you guys would just wave your hands. <laughs> That's our budget staff. Okay, a little bit about the process tonight. First, I want to thank you all for, for making it here. Hopefully, everybody wasn't stuck on the 281. So the process tonight is we're going to show a short video that kind of gives you an overview of the city's budget, the budget process. Um, some of you may have participated in June at the early public hearings where we did get input, worked on the budget, as the councilwoman said, through the month of July. Last week, the city manager presented the, the draft budget. Uh, and that's what this video will talk about. So right now we have a draft budget on the table. So tonight we want to get your input on that budget. We're going to ask you at your tables to identify five priority areas, the things you think we should keep doing, doing a little more of, want increases. These are the things that are really important to you, so the five priorities. But because we have a really tight budget and a budget shortfall that we're dealing with, we want you to help us identify three areas, and, and I'll tell you, it's a lot harder when you get to this part. Three areas where you think we can cut or reduce or increase fees to pay for those priority areas that you do want. So you'll have about 20 minutes or so to work at your tables. We'll keep time, and then we'll ask you to switch to the, the, the tough job. Uh, and then we'll give you a few minutes on that. And then what we'll do is ask each table, one of our residents at each table, to report out to the entire group. Um, the city rep is at your table is there to help facilitate, uh, take notes, whatever helps the uh, conversation go better at the table. Any questions before we start? Okay, video. Hello, I'm City Manager Cheryl Scully. The fiscal year 2014 proposed budget is balanced and allows the city to continue to provide quality services to the community while making the tough decisions to keep the city financially sound. The fiscal year 2014 proposed budget focuses on reducing administrative costs and prioritizes public safety, street maintenance, sidewalks, and drainage improvements. The proposed budget reflects policy direction from Mayor Castro, City Council members, and valuable input from the recent community budget hearings held in June of every quadrant of the city. This video was developed to provide a summary of the fiscal year 2014 proposed budget and to enhance understanding of city services and how they're financed. It also highlights areas where the city has been able to recommend budget cuts while maintaining quality service levels to meet community needs. 
Over the next few weeks, the City Council will carefully consider the proposals included in the proposed budget. Mayor Castro, City Council members, and I look forward to your input prior to the adoption of the City's budget on September 12, 2013. We appreciate your interest in the City of San Antonio's proposed fiscal year 2014 budget. We are committed to keeping San Antonio financially strong and to making San Antonio a dynamic and healthy community for you and your family. The City is committed to continually improving services for residents of San Antonio and nurturing an environment for future growth and prosperity. Each day, the city's workforce is in the community, working to maintain city streets, protect you and your family, preserve the beauty and integrity of your neighborhoods, and offer services and programs that can enrich the quality of life for all residents. The fiscal year 2014 proposed budget is balanced as required by law and does not include a city property tax rate increase. The general fund, which is the city's largest operating fund, totals $989 million, less than 1% higher than last year. The budget is transparent and reflects City Council policy direction and valuable input from the community. In June of this year, five community budget hearings were held across the city to obtain service priorities from residents before the proposed budget was prepared. Following the community budget hearings, City Council annually establishes priorities and the proposed budget recommendations reflect that input. This year, the high priority services identified are public safety, streets, sidewalks and drainage as our city core services. Your city budget is more efficient and since 2007, the city has reduced the general fund budget by nearly 88 million and has eliminated 1,633 civilian positions with no layoffs. During the same period, the city added 307 police officers and 167 firefighters, reflecting community and city council priorities. The FY 2014 proposed budget reduces 13 million in the general fund and a total of 279 positions in all funds. In the general fund five-year financial forecast presented in May of 2013, Revenues were projected to increase at a slower pace than expenditures, necessitating adjustments to be made to the budget. The proposed FY 2014 budget presented to the City Council on August 8th is balanced and reflects the City Council priorities of no city property tax rate increase, budget reductions, and some fee increases. Included in the budget are $5 million in proposed revenue adjustments in the general fund, primarily in EMS transport fees, hazmat inspection fees, and recreational fees. The proposed budget also maintains the city's financial reserves at $89 million, or 9% of general fund appropriations. With the efficiencies added in this year's proposed budget, general fund expenses increased less than 1%. One of the top priorities recommended by the community and the City Council is public safety. The Police Department has applied for a Communities Organized for Public Service hiring grant that will allow for the hiring of additional police officers for three years. The budget includes $307,000 for a city match if the grant is awarded in October 2013 for 10 officers. $1.3 million is also included in the budget to add more police in-car video and other equipment. The fire department provides quality fire prevention and suppression, emergency medical service, and rescue operations to city residents. The proposed budget enhances these efforts by adding three full-time hazmat inspectors to improve inspections, as well as $3 million for the replacement of two hazmat trucks and other fire equipment. Improvement and maintenance of streets and sidewalks continues to be a high priority for residents. The proposed budget continues funding the Infrastructure Maintenance Program at $54 million. This amount includes $35 million to improve streets and $8.5 million for sidewalks. This is $2.5 million more than in 2013, and $4.5 of the $8.5 million will go to improve sidewalks to schools. $3.5 million will be used for drainage improvements, and the final $7 million is for pavement markings, alleyways, traffic signals, and bike facility improvements. 
In 2012, voters approved a $596 million bond program that includes citywide improvements for streets, bridges, and sidewalks, drainage and flood control, parks, libraries, and public safety facilities. During fiscal year 2014, many of these projects will be designed and approximately half will begin construction. The FY 2014 budget includes $1.25 million for initiatives to revitalize and improve neighborhoods throughout San Antonio. This amount includes the Renew SA program, Ciclovia, and the Fit Pass program. Also included is funding for animal care services to continue to perform 26,500 spay-neuter surgeries and maintain a 75% live release rate. Code continues to be a priority in 2014, and no service reductions for code enforcement are recommended in the budget to ensure a continued focus on improving neighborhoods. San Antonio Senior Centers provide daily health, fitness, and nutrition support to residents 60 years and older. The FY 2014 budget continues to make these services a priority and includes $1.5 million in funding for the expansion of senior centers in districts 2, 6, and 7. The 2014 proposed budget includes $3.5 million for economic development incentives, $1.75 million is dedicated for inner city incentives, and $1.75 million is dedicated to citywide initiatives. A key piece in developing the city's budget is making decisions to maintain a strong financial position while providing quality service delivery. The budget reduces $13 million by streamlining services, focusing on community priorities and reducing administrative overhead. On average, non-public safety departments and the general fund reduced cost by 5%. This year's budget reductions include leveraging technology and process improvements in municipal court to reduce the time customers spend at court by 30% while reducing costs by 914000 The budget also reduces $1.7 million in administrative overhead, which includes a 50% reduction to travel and other line item budgets, as well as 11 administrative positions. The city will also achieve savings by transitioning services provided at the link centers to existing facilities, including Development Services One Stop, select libraries, and other city facilities. Service modifications totaling $1.3 million include realignment of parks landscape and sanitation maintenance schedules and consolidating 10 open play community centers with low attendance with other full service centers in close proximity. The budget includes a change in the outdoor swimming pool program that is anticipated to save $310,000. This proposal expands the existing six-day-per-week operation of outdoor swimming pools to a seven-day-per-week operation by limiting the number of days each pool is open. Delegate agency funding is proposed to be reduced by 5%, consistent with the average reduction of non-public safety city departments. Funding for Haven for Hope, however, remains at the FY 2013 budget levels. This proposal saves 630000 Solid waste collection services are supported by a user fee collected monthly through your electric bill. The budget includes funding to support a subscription curbside recycling program for organic recycling and adding two additional neighborhood drop-off collection centers. An increase to the solid waste monthly rate of 50 cents is recommended in the 2014 proposed budget, raising the cost to $19.93 per month. Now that you've learned about the proposed fiscal year 2014 budget, we want to hear from you. We encourage you to attend any of the community budget hearings. There are five area-wide community meetings held across the city and two at the city council chambers. As required by law, the city budget is scheduled to be adopted on September 12th. The city's new fiscal year begins October 1st. Visit the city's website at www.sanantonio.gov to learn more about the proposed fiscal year 2014 budget and the public input process. You can watch this video again on TVSA, the city's government access channel. As you can see, the city's fiscal year 2014 proposed budget is balanced and continues Thank to Thank you for being here tonight. Just a couple of things to highlight about the proposed budget. So when we presented our five-year financial forecast, as we do annually, to the City Council in May of this year, we talked about revenue and expense, what our projections are for the upcoming year. 
And revenues are increasing, uh, what we presented, 2.4%, and expenses are increasing 3.5%, just to maintain what we're doing today. And so knowing that the mayor and council want us to continue our core services of police and fire and street maintenance, and that leaves then just that rest of the budget then to make cuts because to fund what we're doing today, and they said no property tax increase, no increase in the city's property tax rate, which has not been increased in 20 years. In fact, the city council has lowered the city property tax rate three times in the last seven years. So you can see the math. Revenues are not growing as fast as the cost to deliver the services, so we have to make reductions. And I want you to know that the council's been very diligent about this over the years. We actually have fewer city positions today than we had eight years ago. And if you think about the population, it's grown by 160,000. We have more parks, more libraries, more fire stations that we're staffing, and yet we're doing that by using technology, by changing our business systems, by competitively bidding some of the work that we do on how can we provide best value to you all uh, for the dollars that you pay. And so we've made those reductions and yet we've increased public safety because we needed more police officers and firefighters. So we've cut 1,350 civilian positions, but we've added 474 police officers and firefighters. So we have net fewer positions today and yet revenues are not growing at the cost increases for the city's general fund. The proposed budget is less than 1% of an increase for next year. And overall, all funds, general fund, restricted funds, and capital budgets are actually down 1% as compared to this year. So it, these are tough decisions for the city council members. We spent three and a half hours this afternoon talking about public safety, police and fire, and they represent 66% or two-thirds of our general fund budget. So if we don't reduce in that area, that leaves just one-third of the budget to make cuts, and those are all very important things. I, I don't want to recommend these kinds of reductions, and we try to focus in the administrative area, not in the direct service delivery, but having cut a lot of that administrative overhead over the past several years, there isn't a lot left to cut without impacting services. And that one-third of the budget to cut includes important things like streets maintenance and parks and libraries and animal care services and code enforcement and our human service agencies that we fund and then the general administration of the city, finance and human resources and accounting and uh, those administrative functions. So it, these are tough decisions and what we're looking for from you all tonight uh, are your ideas, those things that are most important to you and then those things that you think we could do without uh, so that we can keep things balanced. We either have more revenue or we have to cut expenses because we are required by law to maintain a balanced budget. It's balanced today and it will be balanced when the council adopts the budget. We're not like other levels of government that are able to carry deficits. We don't do that. We fund um, our activities for the fiscal year, but we also take a look at the future. We take care of today's needs, but then what's the impact on the decisions that we make today, what does that do to the budget next year and the years beyond so that we're aware of that and not creating bigger problems for us in the future. So I'll turn it back over to Gloria. She's going to give you um, some other uh, guidance and then at the conclusion of your work then we'll have a report out. If you could identify one of the residents from your table then to summarize and speak to the issues that you come up with, that would be very helpful to us because we use this information and share it with all of the council members as we do these meetings throughout all of San Antonio. So thank you for coming tonight. Gloria? And in case you didn't know, that's our city manager, Cheryl Scully. Um, okay, so 
Um, we're going to change it a little bit. I do want you to know that we will summarize everything that happens here tonight and at the other uh, public hearings, and all of this input will be summarized for the City Council to consider as they make the final budget decisions. So as we get started, we decided um, the harder job is coming up with three areas to, to cut or increase um, fees, um, generate more revenue, or things that you think we can do without, eliminate or reduce in the budget. So if at your tables you'll start with the reductions first, and then when you've come up with your three, then you move on to uh, the wonderful things that you want to keep, enhance, expand. So start with the three reductions and then move on to your five priority areas. And, and we'll walk around and answer questions and you have a staff resource at your tables. Thank you. David is ready. <laughs> okay, we're going to start the, uh, the report outs by table, and I already have a volunteer over here at table one. Okay, we had the best table, and you'll be able to see that because we, to start with, we had five reductions, not three. So I would like to hear a little applause before we start. Thank you. Number one priority in our reductions were to con consolidate more city and school operations, parks and libraries. We're doing some of that. We could do much more. Reduce downtown incentives with uh, reducing waivers and tax breaks. Increase fines and make, administrative, make it administrative to facilitate the collection of code violations feel like that that could be better done and uh, not take as long to do. Con consolidate some city and county operations, parks again, and uh, this will be, I'm sure, well received, a study to increase property tax. Our priorities for things that we feel need to be examined and um, maintained or increased, public safety, but we also would like to renegotiate um, the contracts when they come due for benefits and other uh, pension funds. Street and sidewalk maintenance require developers to include and develop park space when there's a new development so they don't get their permits until there's a commitment to do this. Require the developers to build out these parks and the park space. More downtown recycling and increase operating hours at the Bitters HHW. Thank you very much. Okay, how about this table? Are we ready? Table two? Oh, thank you. Okay, for our decrease, we have property tax increase. And then we have to reduce support to Haven for Hope and to focus on the collection of unpaid EMS and other revenue dues. And then we have increased city parking fees, if possible, and hazard tax to DUI. Oh, and by the way, I'm, I'm Daniel Gutierrez. I'm Girl Board Chair of the Girl Scouts of South, South West Texas. So. And I'm Amanda Gutierrez. And I'm Amanda Gutierrez. Nice. And for our increase or to maintain currently, we have youth programs because like me and my sisters being Girl Scouts, we get to learn a lot and we also get to grow and become more independent and more better leaders and we can encourage confidence and we get to speak for ourselves and not afraid to speak for ourselves and speak for what we believe in. And so that's why we believe youth programs will be wonderful. And we also have senior nutrition programs, library hours, 
And we have animal care services. And we also have public art support of the arts. Thank you. Did you want to go next? Okay, here oh. we go. Okay, for a table three, our uh, proposed reductions are um, through elimination of the electric car chain charging stations, which are not very often used. Do you want to turn it? Um, changing the um, city's office work hours to four-day work week instead of a five-day work week. Work week, and um, our third one we had seven initially, but we re reduced it to three. Our third one is to have more efficient, more efficiency in management of Sims. Sims. I don't know what that stands for, but <laughs> okay. And then our top priorities. Uh, number one is to retain the 20 CRTs to not reduce it to 10. Uh, we consider that a an important part of public safety in our city. Um, keep. Public works as it is. Uh, we want well-paid police and firemen and women. Uh, continue with park maintenance and along with the last group, animal care services. Thank you. Thank you. We have volunteers here tonight. Okay, great. Did you want to come <laughs> up or do you want to stay back here? here? Okay. Okay, our group um, decided on to pull it down a little. Are we going to start on the cuts? We'll start on the cuts here is to cut subsidies for town, downtown developments to uh, private entities primarily that are getting big tax breaks for building these condos and such downtown. Um, our uh, parks operating, or I'm sorry, Hemisphere Park, yes, H Park downtown to cut some costs on the expansion of that. The costs for that have dramatically gone up for just administrative operations, so we need to look at that. Uh, and then capital money uh, that's being transferred to operating budgets is not, not good anytime. Whether you're a businessman under any circumstances, your auditor is going to say, no, no, you can't take capital improvement bonds. These are bonds that are being put over about $17 million over into uh, the city operating budget. That'll run us out of business real fast. <clears throat> Okay, and the capital improvements uh, needs a lot more efficiency in their management. Okay, let's go to uh, expanding. We had uh, several at our table thought we needed to expand our animal uh, care systems here um, with punitive enforcements around that. Uh, we needed to stop cuts in our libraries. We just recently passed this big deal in our city for educating our little kids but we want to shut our libraries down. That doesn't make any sense. Uh, reinstate the dollars to our city parks. Uh, somebody told me this evening we're number 37 in cities uh, for parks, that uh, we need major improvements in our parks in our city. And then the last one is uh, reinstate health department cuts. And I really think you ought to expand on that. Well, um, publicity is a, is a double-edged sword. And the mayor's done such a fine job in selling the city nationally, and the CVB has done what a wonderful job as well, promoting our city uh, on all kinds of, of programs, that uh, that's one side of the double-edged sword. The other side would be, um, say for example, uh, a tourist gets killed here, or in this case, the Salmonella outbreak, or a West Niles um, uh, outbreak, or maybe, you know, somebody getting bitten by a, a rat on the river walk or whatever, and it makes big news. And all the work that the mayor's done on one side of the double-edged sword is negated by the negative press. So you know, the, the, bigger, the bigger job, the better job you've done on building the brand, uh, in this case, San Antonio, then the bigger the negative publicity comes back to haunt you when you have a problem. And the health department is one of those departments that they do preventative work. It's out of sight, out of mind. The better work they do, the less you hear about them. The worst job they do, the more you hear about them. When there's the 
you know, mosquito problems or whatever the case may be. Last year, we cut 10% off the health department budget. We caught about four people. This year, we're looking at cutting 10% again. So as once again, I'm here advocating for the health department, San Antonio Metro Health. Are you ready? We just stand here? Yes. How about that? We're ready. Table seven. Our cuts are, were for the streetcars downtown to cut, to cut the monies for the streetcars. Our second cut was for tax abatements for the businesses relocating in San Antonio. Too much money going into businesses and developers. Uh, relocate the monies that are going into the museums. Relocate all the money that's going into our museums. We, uh, we would like to see uh, our add-ons or some things that we would like to see happen would be services for seniors and youth. Uh, we'd like to see that continued. We have a lot of seniors and we have a lot of youth, both. And we're going to have to look out for our seniors and look out for our youth. If I ask everybody in here to raise your hand, if you're over a certain age tonight, I'll guarantee you we've got all seniors in the room. We need uh, services that support the seniors and youth, such as in our parks and in our libraries. We want to be sure that, that we have more services in the libraries and in the parks for seniors and youth, both. Very important that we don't neglect either one of those two. The last, the last one, of course, is, is the one that we all need, and it's our, it's our city services, such as streets and drainage. As you all know, the recent uh, rain that we had, if we ever have rain again, a lot of areas were flooded out, and a lot of, a lot of people lost their homes uh, on the south side of San Antonio. And there was a lot of flooding on the north side of San Antonio, particularly around the almost dam. So if the dam hadn't held the water, I will guarantee you downtown would have been flooded. So we have to do something about the drainage. Thank you. That's table seven. Good evening. Okay, so our list of uh, priorities, we came up with two. The first one was economic development incentives. We feel like with the uh, budget crunch, this would be a good time to uh, just be a little bit more conservative on that, if you will. And then uh, the uh, second one was increased E-rate rebate. I don't know what that really is, but we had someone that told me that everybody from the city knows what that is, and we nodded our heads and voted for it. Sounded like a good idea, so we're gonna go with that. Uh, and then uh, we didn't do a number three because uh, we chickened out. Uh, we talked about raising uh, taxes and didn't want to get booed out of the room. But uh, since the first two tables put that down, we'll add that to ours as well. So, so um, and then number f uh, the priority areas: restore uh, Sunday hours for libraries. Our understanding, because we had uh, John representative at the library, that uh, that's in their budget to uh, cut those, and so we'd like to see that uh, possibly not happen. Uh, parks and recreation. Obviously, I'm sure there's some cuts there that we'd like to see continue. Agencies, I do feel that uh, agencies are working very hard to serve the community and, and have a lot of community needs, so I'd like to see that uh, stay in contact. Uh, and then uh, increased funding for early childhood, childhood literacy and uh, seek more grant funding. Okay, apparently uh, decrease in abatement is really popular at this one, and we agree with them. Both private and uh, the industry, we feel like that's not something we want to give away. We talked about possibly adding some fees at the park, because every time we have Easter, people leave a mess, and we have to pay for extra people to come out and clean, and maybe even like after some fiesta functions. Uh, we also, our third one was uh, 
Everyone is having to cut. A lot of staff is not getting any extra money. We felt like maybe the executive salaries and bonuses should also be looked at. And this is kind of a difficult one, but we did, did have someone from the police department sitting at our table, and we said maybe they need to, to look at their budget because they, they take such a big chunk. Uh, maybe they should try and see if they can find any grants or other revenues or other ways that they could possibly increase their budget so that they could decrease the amount from us or from the city. Uh, oh, we already did the fiesta. And uh, District 3 said no more senior citizen centers in their area because they feel like they have enough and they're happy with theirs. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. No more senior citizen centers and until District 3 gets one, excuse me. Apparently District 3 does not have a senior citizen, let it be known. Uh, our add-ons are, uh, we want the library to retain their hours, and I'm partial to that. Uh, we want streets, we want uh, the parks and the infrastructure of them, and we want Christ response uh, team not to be cut and we want to main, uh, keep the budget for Project Quest as proposed, and we want education such as trade jobs as well as professional jobs, because we have a lot of people that that's, that's the level at which they uh, can find a job. Thank you. Hello. So um, we had someone that was at our table but left, and her idea of um, cuts and reductions was senior services. So what we're saying to that is, because the lady left, we're saying maybe find a way to advocate for senior services um, in the area. So um, administrative costs, that could be a cut or a reduction. Maybe not the young man that's sitting at our table or the lady that came to talk to us because she was really nice and patient. But some of the costs, maybe consolidate positions. The, um, the specific example that I gave was on three positions that I saw on the internet. Uh, business intelligence lead, business intelligence supervisor, business intelligence manager. Then I asked the question, where are those people? Well, there is not one person in that area that has been hired. So it begged the question, then why is it continuously open? If there is no one to lead, no one to supervise, and no one to manage, then why is the city going to expend funds on that particular positions when there's no one to lead, supervise, or manage? So that was that. And so what we're saying is consolidate uh, positions. Maybe animal care services, we thought, would be another area where um, we could cut and maybe possibly reduce. Um, our priorities are street networks, so we're thinking maybe road infrastructure, chuck holes, potholes, every time it rains and we're driving down the road, right? So we think of, about those and that was one of our priorities. Um, library services, we totally love libraries because we think that our kids are special and the people that work there are also very special because they're the ones that tend to our kids when we're at work and or we drop them off at the library. So we think that, that um, also people that are applying for a driver's license, people that are applying for jobs, people that don't have computers at home because they either can't afford them or they just don't have one. You know, so things like that. And also public safety to us was a uh, very high priority. So we thought that we would list it, not necessarily at number three, but maybe right along with library services because we all deal with the public and we know that already on the uh, purple color, um, those services are taking a big chunk. So yeah, that is a priority, especially when a lot of money is being expended on that. All righty. I have no name, but I thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, I think that was our last table. Lots of good input. Before we wrap up, I wanted to check if Councilwoman Chan or Councilman Nuremberg wanted to say any closing remarks. Okay. 
I'll be very brief. I just wanted to thank everyone for coming and also for giving us the your input and also your suggestion. I know how difficult it can be because when I've been on council for four years and I went through four budgets, so it can be very complicated, but we certainly would take your input to heart. And I think we have heard you loud and clear that we wanted to have basic services as a focus. I mean, maybe that's just me, but as I heard about streets, I heard about public service or uh, you know public safety, I heard about library, I heard about uh, uh, parks and recreation. So we would, and uh, Cheryl, are we getting those back so we can kind of synthesize what we heard today? And uh, in Gloria, how would we, uh, how would, we're gonna post this online also or? Okay, we're gonna post online. So I wanted to make sure that you understand that we really care about input and we will look into it. The council will listen to your input, but also city staff. And we have until September, how many more weeks of a budget session, Maria? September 12th, so we have time, and each one of us have email and phone that you can call us. And Councilman Nirenberg, you would like to say I, I, I will echo everything that Councilwoman Chan said, and in addition that this is an ongoing process, even as we get past September 12th we have a challenge to meet for next year too. So these conversations need to continue to happen and our phones are working, our emails are working, and we look forward to helping address these challenges with you uh, together. So thank you and thank you also to city staff who now have to put all the pieces together. And I think I will be remiss to not to thank our city manager and also Maria and all staff members. You know how hard it is because most of the time Council members only tell her what we want, but it's very difficult to tell her where we want to cut. And when you wanted to suggest, and I have some suggestions about where to cut, I have several as a matter of fact, but then you also have other council members may not agree with you. So this is definitely a very complicated process. It is a balancing act, but I have to say that uh, I have worked with Cheryl for four years, and uh, Cheryl has pushed basic services as much as she can. But uh, she has 11 bosses, so it is hard, and we recognize that, Cheryl, so thank you for what you do. But I still believe that we can still prioritize it a little bit more to focus on basic services. So I would like to see that happen. And I think uh, there, there's also other departments that we can look into to achieve a little bit more efficiency. And I think you know which department I'm talking about. So uh, we will go through the process and hopefully uh, we can pull the focus back to uh, basic services. Thank you again for your attendance your participation, and it's eight o'clock, so good night. I just wanna say there's two citywide um, hearings that you can also go to on August 28th and September 4th. Thank you and good night. <laughs>